Welcome to our online service. For those of you who might have come to the nine o'clock communion, you need to know and everybody needs to know that our online service will be our main service going forward. <clears throat> uh, and it's good to have a, able to have a mix, but um, this is the best way for us all to meet together and worship God together at the moment. Um, this, this week, um, the team have picked out a theme of families. Of course, families have been under huge pressure um, during this time. Parents being teachers, uh, relationships are difficult sometimes when all cooped up together. Um, everybody's experiences will be very different, but we know that for all families, this will be, have been a hugely challenging time. Um, you will see some, um, Miriam, um, Megan's niece, Sam's daughter, um, is doing our interview today. And there's just a lovely video of Terry and her children um, out and about. And, and so that's the sort of theme for uh, this week. And I hope that we will see you in the Zoom meeting. For those of you who may be joining us for the first time, the name, the number for the Zoom meeting will be given at the end of the service and we're very happy to be in contact with you if you want to be in contact with us through the email address and the website. So let us just take a moment as we come to worship God together, who is the God of the technology and the airwaves and wherever we meet, his spirit can go to places that we cannot understand and can be with us even though we are physically separated. And we praise you and thank you, Lord, for that. Amen. We come from scattered lives to meet with God. Let us recognize his presence with us. As God's people, we have gathered. Let us worship him together.
Hi lovely St Stephen's Church family, um, I'm Sam, I'm Miriam and we're going to talk together a little bit about what life has been like for us for the last few months. Um, so Miriam I've noticed, uh, I've been reluctant to bring it up, but I've noticed you've been at home a little bit more than usual recently, I was just wondering if you could please tell me why that is. Um, well we've been in lockdown. Mm -hmm. um, and what's that meant for you Miriam? Well I've been doing homeschooling and I've had my full timetable I've just been doing it all on the computer. Wowzers and um, apart from the obvious issues of the teachers um, at home not being up to the usual standards um, how have you found um, online school? Yeah it's been good my well most of it has my actual school teachers <laughs> have been really great um, um, but some of it's been a bit tricky mm -hmm. like it's very tiring being on a computer all all day mm -hmm. and sometimes because josh is younger than me so he doesn't have school and he does stuff sometimes that i would prefer to be doing yeah and sitting at my laptop yeah it's day. been really really hard hasn't it sometimes yeah. but you have done an amazing job mm. um so school aside miriam uh mm. what are some of your best bits of the last few months? Um, what have, what's been good about lockdown? Well, I've really loved uh, being able to spend a lot of time with uh, you guys and my rabbit. Um, and what have been some of the trickier bits? You mentioned that school's been tricky, but has there been any other bits that you found hard? Um, not seeing friends and family for so long, that's been hard, and mm -hmm. my school teachers. Yeah. And especially since I'm not sure whether I'm going to have the same form tutor next year. So. Yeah, and you really love your form tutor, don't you? Yeah, he's yeah. great. Yeah. So one of the things you've been up to, Miriam, is that you've kind of been in charge of our garden, haven't you? Yeah. Um, why do you have to be in charge of the garden? Because you kill things on site. Yeah, yeah, green <laughs> things, not children or animals. Yeah. Um, just to clarify. Um, so we were thinking that we might go and show um, our friends from church some of what we've been up to, weren't we? So yeah. should we go and do that now? Yeah. Brilliant. Let's go. go. Hi, everyone. So uh, we are braving the rain to show you some bits of our garden, kind of Luscombe Gardeners World style. And we've been joined by Josh, who has obviously also been locked down with us. And he's just going to tell you some of the things we've been growing out the back here. Do you want to go for it, Josh? So we've been growing carrot here, potatoes there, um, leeks there and in the back sunflowers. Here we've got radishes, they're not working too well. We've got spinach but that's been eaten by the birds. Mm-hmm. And what's this here? Uh there that's lettuce. Yep. Going pretty well. I mean salad's your favourite thing, isn't it? So Oh, maybe not. <laughs> okay, so over here we have courgettes. They're growing really well. We're getting a lot of yellow ones. And we've got corn, which should hopefully start getting some actual corn in September. Okay, so Josh, in this pot down here, we've got something growing that's one of your favourite things, haven't we? Rhubarb. Rhubarb. What do you like to have rhubarb as? Crumble, full, you know. Yeah, type. it's super good, isn't it? Yeah. It's a bit like a fantastic in fruit form. Um, we've got some holly in this pot here. Fantastic. Um, could you tell me what that's doing there? Uh, it's making sure the birds don't pick the compost. Yeah, because they started stealing it all, didn't they? Mm. Which made it a bit tricky for the rhubarb to grow. So yeah. I'll pop that back. Thanks, Josh. Okay, so here you can see a load of trampled grass where Daddy has done his hedge cutting. This is the remains of my wildflowers, well, my cosmos and catenanchers, that I spent months growing and also spent a lot of seeds trying to get. And these are the ones that haven't been trampled over here, thankfully. So Miriam, this is the last thing we're going to show um, St Stephen's, isn't it? This yeah. is a very special tree. Can you tell me why it means a lot to you? Well, it, this tree is particularly special because when I was just two, I planted a conker in a pot as like a pretend thing and like quite a few years later a shoot came up and it's grown into this tree and I have taken this every single place we've been we've mm -hmm. lived and we've lived in quite a few places haven't we yeah so and what happened last summer with this tree last summer we moved and 
we thought it had died and then uh, maybe a few months ago now it started getting leaves in it and it got about like that much bigger mm -hmm. and it was really cool because I thought it had died and we lost it but we hadn't great news and you're very good at caring for it and looking after it aren't you it's very yeah. important with plants <laughs> as we know <laughs> cool thanks for showing us the garden miriam it's all right bye guys bye we come to god as one from whom no secrets are hidden to ask for his forgiveness and peace god our father we come to you in sorrow for our sins, for turning away from you and ignoring your will for our lives. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. For behaving just as we wish without thinking of you. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us <clears throat> for failing you by what we do and think and say father forgive us save us and help us for letting <clears throat> ourselves be drawn away from you by temptations in the world about us. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. <clears throat> For living as if we were ashamed to belong to your son. <clears throat> Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. May the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins. Heal and strengthen us by his spirit and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. And a prayer for today. Almighty God, send down upon your church the riches of your Holy Spirit and kindle in all who minister the gospel your countless gifts of grace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. That same day Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered round him that he got into a boat and sat in it while all the people stood on the shore. Then he told them many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it didn't have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow, but when the seed came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil where it produced a crop hundred, sixty, thirty times what was sown. He who has ears, let him hear. Listen then to what the, the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message of, about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is a seed sown along the path. The one who receives the seed that fell on rocky places as the man who hears the, the word and at once receives it with joy. But since he has no root, he lasts only a short time. 
when trouble or persecution comes because of the word, he quickly falls away. The one who received the seed that fell among the thorns is the man who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the uh, deceitfulness of wealth choke it, making it unfruitful. But the one who received the seed that fell on good soil is the man who hears the word and understands it. He produces a crop yielding a hundred, sixty or thirty times what was sown. This is the word of the Lord. Many of the people who heard Jesus tell this parable would have been very confused about what it was about. Some would have wondered why Jesus was telling a story about a very wasteful farmer who seems to scatter expensive seed just about everywhere in the hope that some of it would grow. Others would have noted that this is a story about a very fortunate farmer who, despite the wasted seed, still managed to have a yield of up to a hundred times, which I'm told even in today's terms is simply amazing. Luckily, Matthew goes on to let us in on what this parable is all about. So what can we learn? And I wonder if it's as obvious as it seems. As those of you that know me will be aware, I'm not the gardener of the family. But I do know that one of the fundamentals of a good harvest of fruit and vegetables is good soil preparation. Well, at least that's what my wife Lisa told me as I was moving about five tonnes of manure onto our allotment last year to create the seed beds that you can see in the picture. Of course, the seed that Jesus talked about is the message of God's new way of life. Matthew calls it the new kingdom, God's kingdom that was breaking into the world. This message is for everyone, no exceptions. That's why I'm so glad that Jesus includes such a wasteful farmer in this story. When we tell the good news of Jesus, it's his seed that we are sowing. And we should never just sow this seed in places where we think it's guaranteed to grow. Yes, the message of this new kingdom is going to meet with rock hard human hearts. But how can I tell whose heart is ready to receive the message and whose heart is still made of stone? We don't make anything germinate and grow. That's God's work. Surely it's got to be worse to miss some good soil whilst trying to avoid the rocks than missing some rocks with good soil. But this got me wondering. I like growing cactuses and succulents. And the plant I'm most fascinated by is my stone plant. You can see it in the picture. It's a native of South Africa and Namibia and grows in desert places. But this one seems very happy on my office windowsill. As you can see, it just has two really big bulbous leaves. But every year the leaves split apart to reveal new leaves. Rather than shooting up, it renews and grows from within. I read that if you're really lucky, you get four leaves, two plants, which is what I've got. A sign of a good farmer, I think. Like most cactus and succulents, these plants can survive in very poor stony soils, but they still won't grow anywhere. They need moisture and some nutrients from the soil. And every time I look at my windowsill before I start work in the morning, I'm reminded of the richness, the diversity 
and yes, the sheer determination of plants to survive. My stone plant shows me that beautiful things can grow in poor soil because they are cared for by God. You don't have to be perfect to be invited into God's new kingdom. You don't have to have the best soil available. You just need to be willing to grow. But as you grow, you might need to do some work on your life. Maybe you'll need to get rid of some stones or do a bit of weeding of the things that the Holy Spirit tells you are preventing you from fully flourishing in Jesus. You'll certainly need to make sure that you nourish yourself through prayer, worship and learning. This way, just like my stone plant, even if you find yourself in an in inhospitable, stony place, God, through his Holy Spirit, will sustain and renew you from within. Oh, and one final thing. Matthew places this parable as the first in a whole string of other parables where Jesus tells more about this new kingdom, the revolution that he's bringing about. And I just wonder if that's why he has Jesus ending this parable with the words, if you have ears, listen. The sowing is just the start. So let's keep listening to Jesus. The story of God's new harvest just keeps growing and getting better. And so quite a bit to think about. I've been thinking about tolerance within our community as a way of improving our soil at St. Stephen's in recent months. I, I hope you'll be tolerant of all the things in this service that don't particularly go exactly right. And maybe just a time to think about that as we um, sing together, listen to Megan play and just come before God together.
Let us declare our faith in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him, all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And so we come to pray together. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. As we continue to think about the parable of the sower, let us pray that God's words of truth may take root in our hearts and grow to rich maturity. Heavenly Father, may we hear your will for us and act upon it. May we take seriously our responsibility to encourage and nurture one another in faith at every age and at every stage. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. At this time, when we are spending more time at home and have more time perhaps to think, may every act of selfless giving and every search for truth be richly blessed and rewarded. Disturb assumptions and lead many to ponder more deeply the spiritual dimension of their lives. May the word of God reach all who are ready to receive it and let us set no boundaries here as to who they might be. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, when we are spending more time at home in each other's company, make our homes places of love and growth. 
and accepting and forgiving to all who are nurtured there. And if quarrels and heartaches arise, remind us to honour one another as your cherished children. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, may all whose bodies, souls or minds are aching know the comforting and strengthening power of your companionship and the healing work of your love. May we be more ready to support and befriend one another through the difficult times in the name and love of the God we worship. Lord, in your mercy. We pray today for those who will make decisions for our future, those in the government and those responsible for decisions regarding the future of our church life. We know that life is going to be very different for quite a time and we pray that we may all behave in a way that is the good for the good of us all. We pray for our leaders at St Stephen's that they may know God's love and strength at this time. We pray for those making decisions regarding commerce and industry and for those who fear for the future. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, our God, in all the events and phases of our life, we give you thanks for your steadfast and unchanging love which sustains and directs us. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I've always had God's heart for families in need, for the ones that were struggling for no fault of their own, the ones that had had the bad breaks, the families who just could not get it together. But I also knew that when things got really bad, there was very little support for them to improve their parenting skills. If social services were involved, they would expect them to jump through hoops, go on long-winded, unrealistic, middle-class parenting courses. So God put on my heart that when I had more space, then I would write a parenting course for these families, short and sweet, using plain language, accessible and real. When I started working at St Stephen's, I heard about an organisation called Kids Matters and found that they had already written the course that I would have written. Actually, it was much better. So last October, I trained as a Kids Matters facilitator and successfully ran the first course at St Stephen's in January with a team of lovely helpers running the creche. At the start of lockdown, we found out that Soul Church Foundation and ENYP were delivering food parcels for families in need around the city. We contacted the Free School and Bignall School to see if they had any families that would benefit from this. And since lockdown, we have arranged for approximately 15 families each week to have much needed food parcels. Last Friday, I met up with the head teacher at the free school and had a wonderful meeting to discuss how we could continue to serve them. I talked about Kids Matters and how families could be supported in the long term by linking with church. They were very excited about this, naming families that they could see would benefit from it. As a result, we've agreed that we will run a Kids Matters course in September at the free school, and the head teachers even agreed to make the cakes. This is a real answer to prayer as we seek to serve our community and especially families in need. Please pray for the families that will be invited to join this group. Some of them will be picking up food parcels from St Stephen's over the summer. Pray for them and their families that they experience the unconditional love that God has to offer them. Please also pray for our little fellows and church families who have achieved so much during lockdown. Pray for a real blessing upon them. Uh, 
And before I declare the blessing, I just want to welcome Sam Luscombe with us. Some of you have met her already. Um, this is the first time she's been with us at, to record a service. And she will be starting as Ordinand in September. So welcome to you, Sam. Thank you. The Lord bless us and watch over us. The Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord look kindly on us and give us peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Hello Rachel! What have you made? Pictures? What are, what are on the pictures? Can you show us? Pictures. You've made two collages, haven't you? Out of the Norwich Diocesan magazine when we'd finished reading it. What's this, Rachel? A fairy. A fairy or perhaps an angel. They're really beautiful. Well done. During lockdown, I've taught both my two sons, who both have autism, to ride their bikes. Um, my youngest has stabiliser still, but that's still a big thing because he wasn't looking forward steering or pedalling, and now he's doing all of that. And there was a time when I couldn't take them out at the same time without another adult, and I'm a single mum. And now we're able to do that, and we're able to go on bike rides. So that's a big thing. <laughs> So what Elliot's done is put clay balls in the bottom for moisture, some sand, some soil, and then various types of moss and sort of uh, and damp loving plants. Then he went out and collected some isopods, which are woodlouse. So in theory, this should be a self-sustaining ecosystem that you can leave closed for the whole time. Can I show you isopods? Yeah, we could. The isopods, we'll see. Isopods. What is the isopods' name? Yeah, he's got two isopods. 